And as you can see here, Chase Claypool is officially a Chicago Bear. Now, overall thoughts on this trade, I would personally give it a B. I think it's a good deal. It's a little bit pricey. Yes, giving away their own second round pick instead of the Bears one. So it's probably going to be like top 12-ish there. But Claypool, I think, is still a good receiver, right? He's got all the talent and all the physical attributes in the world. He just kind of has to get his head straight. He's a little bit of a bozo sometimes. <laughs> I've seen multiple clips of him not finishing his routes, complaining. We saw him last year celebrating in a moment where time was not in their favor. He just needs to get his head straight. But overall, I think him and Fields are going to develop some good chemistry on and off the field, which is good and ultimately what you want to see from your QB wide receiver partnership. Well, and production on the field, I guess. That, that would be pretty good, too. I've honestly been wanting to do a Bears rebuild for a while now as well, so I'm kind of hyped for this one. And that QB, of course, is Justin Fields. Now, it's been a weird season for Fields, right? They didn't really add too much in the offseason to help him out, and they're not really asking him to throw the ball too much as well, but they do overall have one of the best rushing games in the entire league. I believe it's top two, and it ain't two. I don't know, but it's definitely top two, if you know what I mean. <laughs> But overall, I think Fields has been quite solid. Honestly, probably the best of the sophomore QBs who are all kind of struggling in their own right right now. So no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Fields will be our guy today. Let's try to win a bowl with him. The semen dude. What do you mean by that? Demon has been solid as usual, but tell you what, this guy right here, Khalil guy, Khalil Herbert, you know what I'm gonna do to him? I'm gonna make him that start of element, because I honestly think he deserves it. He's been a beast. He's leading them in rushing yards as well. So you know what, Khalil Herbert, you are star dad. Woo! <laughs> Money with two O's, shout out to Bengal. Nikhil Harry, who I guess I'm gonna make my wide receiver three. <laughs> the 25 year old rookie that doesn't know how to catch a punt. Hold up, they have Alex Leatherwood? What in the world? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm starting Alex Leatherwood, baby. Because of that upside, he's still really young. Hopefully, he can develop here in Madden, like Tevin Jenkins in real life has in year number two now. has been super solid for them, unlike Sam Mustafer. Cody Whitehair, Braxton Jones, a decent little blindside protector for Fields as well, chosen in the fifth round, has had a decent year. Oh no. That's right, Roquan Smith is now a Baltimore Ravens. They did get some nice draft capital, a second and a fifth, I believe, in this year's draft, which ain't too bad. They weren't going to pay him. He wasn't in their long-term future as well, so I can't really hate them moving on. But yeah, other than that, I don't even know to talk about on this defense. <laughs> I do like Jalen Johnson. I think he's good enough to be CB1. Kyler Gordon hasn't had the best start to his NFL life, but it's kind of what you expect from rookie corners. I'm gonna still going to make him my CB2 because hopefully we can just bang on that upside. Ooh, tell you who's actually been good, though. Jaquan Brisker, and honestly, kind of criminal that he's only a normal death. <laughs> which is why I'm going to change it to star. <laughs> Look, it's my reboot, all right? He's been solid, though, in my opinion, the second round rookie, and hopefully he can have kids in the future. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie though, this front seven is horrid. <laughs> Eddie Jackson's actually been quite good this year as well. I'll give him his flowers. Wait, hold up, hold up. I did forget in that Roquan Smith trade, they got themselves AJ Klein. And, um, y um, yeah. Who? I am going to fix these games, though, to match up what they are in real life, because Madden, for some reason, just doesn't have start today anymore. Hold up, they play my Dolphins this week as well. There is no God. Only Tua. Also, guys, let me know your guys' thoughts on the two trades made by the Chicago Bears before the trade deadline with Roquan Smith and Chase Claypool. Leave it down below what you would grade it. We are into week nine now, and this division looks a little different to what it looks like in real life. The Lions are five and two, and this is after I did do the TJ Hawkinson trade as well, so um, it's kind of weird. Let's go ahead and sim this game, though, against the Miami Dolphins to see if we can get a little W or not. We lose 21-18, but I will go to week 13 so we can get our focus players. Lions, divisional leaders, 30. Oh my god, they're, they're insane. Hold up. Breakout D-line and DV. Wait, I'd say week 13, I meant week 11. You know what I mean. Breakout D-line though. Who? Sway? Justin Jones. Ooh. I don't really know how old he is, but hold the Falcons to less than 100 rushing yards. Tough when they have that alligator fella. Or just get him one of the um, defensive stats. Hey, what'd you call me? Breakout DB in this one. Brisker or Kyler Gordon would be amazing. You know, coach, the more tape I watch on Jaquan Brisker, the more I think he's a superstar in the making. Can he get it? Hold the Falcons to less than 150 passing yards or get him two of the defensive actions. Okay, we just need our defense to be clamps today. And this class has two top tier receivers although they don't look the best if you base it off their stats like this dude only has d catch and traffic but maybe that's not his game right he's only 197 61 a playmaker 21 years old at a usc we've seen usc come out with some amazing talent the past few years in terms of wide receivers with drake london michael Pittman, amon ross st brown of course juan Carruthers at projected number one i don't know if that's it and this guy's from oregon sko ducks dalton holt 6'3 197 he is 23 years old so a little bit older not vayas jones old but still a little bit older ratings don't really blow you out the water though definitely would like to look somebody though in the interior defensive line all right i checked out most of these fellas and i'm not gonna lie they're they're all right nothing special though whoa 
crazy middle linebackers. Holy. Justin Knowles, not too bad. Not a crazy athlete, but a good one. A zone, B man, B play rec, B hit power. I like what I see. Wow, this dude's physical ratings are the definition of mid. Dude, this class kind of sucks, man. <laughs> They're at least a cool kicker. Nope, they suck too. Oh, look, it's Jakeem Grant. Huh? Actually, wait, the more that I think about that, Jakeem Grant was actually kind of decent for the Bears last year, but <laughs> to us Dolphins fans, Jakeem Grant's the worst player ever. It's kind of funny how that worked out. <laughs> Dude, at this point, I'm about to private work on nobody. Maybe there's a cracked tight end, Marco Acosta. Great to elite acceleration, and then eh. Reggie Hunter, sure. Ooh, I'm gonna do this edge, Tremaine Williams, B block shed, B power moves, B to D finesse moves, A tackle, sure. And lastly, I'm gonna go Gabe Claiborne. Not a bad looking outside linebacker. And at playoff time, we of course did not make it, but look at how dog this division was. Packers eight and nine on top. We were actually second at a seven and 10 record. Vikings only four and 13, like one in the world. They already have more wins than in real life. We were 23rd in offensive yards. Defensively, 29th, whoa. Fields though? Not too bad, you know, 3,679 yards. We want more of that for sure. 24 touchdowns, eight picks. Like I said, the team's not really well built yet, but once we do grow and develop everybody around him, he could put us some nice numbers. Whoa, Demont, Jesus, 1,379 yards, five a carry, 13 tutties for him. Fields was actually decent on the ground as well. Khalil Herbert, nine tutties. Ooh, Darnell Mooney over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns for him, five touchdowns for Komet, 839. Claypool a little disappointing. 696 yards, three touchdowns. Also put him in the slot too, so... Expected better stats from him. Riley Reef wanted Justin Fields to die, I guess. Nicholas Morrow leads the tackles with a million. Nine tackle for losses for him as well. 19 for Gibson. 15 for Blackson. 11 for Justin Jones. I totally forgot about the breakout. Oh, no. Wait, Travis Gibson got 10 sacks. That's actually not bad as well. I'm going to check their stats for that week. It was Justin Jones, right? He had one. I don't think he can he can get it if we skip it like I did because I'm stupid. But what we can do is check his season stats. I believe it was week 11. We needed one. And he got one tackle for loss. He got a sack. I'm going to make him start dev because... I, I, we deserve it. He deserves it. And then Brisker needed two, right? Or less than 150 yards passing. Let's see. Week 11, Falcons. He did not have a tackle for loss. Sack, interception, forced fumble. He did not have one as well. What was the score that game, though? 21-28. They probably had more than 150 yards then. Just going to go ahead and make Justin Jones a star right now then. Interceptions. How are we looking? Four for Brisker. He might go up to the superstar on his own. Decent little year from Morrow with three. Dude, Morrow kind of feasted this year. No cap. Jalen Johnson, Vildor, Eddie Jackson with two themselves. Dak wins MVP of the league. That's kind of cool. Look at some of these ratings, though. Brady, four. Wentz in here. Russell Wilson. Daniel Jones. Goff at nine. Rodgers at ten. Get these wash QBs off my screen. NFC. Can we um? Can we get any love, maybe? Oh, Brisker. Brisker number two for defensive rookie of the year. And I see Kyler Gordon down there at number seven. We'll take that. Fields top 10. How? How? How is Demont number five? Why is Kareem Hunt on the Falcons as well? What? Ooh, Brisker number four for best DB as well. Could he go up to superstar? Let's go ahead and find out some Devies def or offensively. Don't think we got one. Unfortunately, no Fields, no Mooney or Montgomery. Maybe could have went up as well. Defense though, Brisker. Huh? huh? What does that even mean? Okay, I see Justin Jones, we made him go up, of course. Morrow went up because he was a beast this year. Why in the world are you hitting development in 0 out of 500 now? Um, development trade increase. Superstar dev. What? Jaquan Brisker is a superstar now. I wish I could see it, though. That is actually awesome, though, and huge for his development for this video. Super Bowl was 49ers. Bengals, really fun matchup there. 24-21, though. San Fran comes out on top. Super Bowl MVP, Trey Lance, of course. New additions in Christian McCaffrey. They got a squad over there. Too bad in real life they got to use Jimmy Garoppolo. Players ready to renegotiate. AJ Klein, I don't know why you're the headline man, but we got Demon here. 88 overall now. Byron Pringo, Dante Pettis, Kauri, Blazing. Who? Bears fans, you want him back or what? Huh? The real Lamar Jackson. Nicholas Morrow is 28 now, although he had a good year and went up to star. Probably going to let him walk. David Montgomery, I would like to have back. Had a great year with us. We have a boatload of money anyway, so we can throw out the cash this year. This is the season we can go crazy and finally invest in our QB. And also Montgomery's back, so shout out to him. Huh? Wait, no, he's not. Thanks for the offer, but wait, what? Um, 16 mil to tag him. Honestly, I'm just going to do it. We have 155 mil left. No biggie. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Holy crap. That is what the Bears did, though, right? They cleaned the house. No Rock One Smith anymore and no um Robert Quinn anymore as well traded to the Eagles. But now in the offseason, they have so much money, as you guys can see here. They want this time to invest into their team. And the headline man is Odell Beckham. Not the biggest of names, still a good name, but not the biggest, you know what I mean? Deron Payne would actually be massive and would fill our defensive tackle um, void very nicely. Bradbury's here, Singletary, McCole Hardman, Davenport would also be uh, excellent. Jack Conklin as well. Odell kind of wants to join us though, you know? It's like really high green. I wouldn't hate it, but I'm going to go in for Deron Payne first and foremost. Let's just give him a bag. And we're tied with the Broncos for the top offer. Davenport has little to no interest in joining us, which is painful. But I'm. What if, what if I give you a lot of money? I bet you'd have interest then. 
It's still only yellow, huh? How are we on him, though? We are number one tied with the Texans, but it was only like four bars, so maybe I bump it up even more and make it dark green and make sure we just guaranteed get him because I want him. And it didn't move. Okay, whatever. John Conklin, the right tackle here. It's close to Michigan. Yeah, we are. Give you a four-year deal. Bump up the money a little tiny bit. We do want to improve this O-line as well. Cue the clip. They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. Nah, but why is Gino actually elite, though, in real life? This dude is a dog. <laughs> Dude, do we just go out and grab Odell? I don't really know. He has a ton of interest, 86 overall. He is 30 now, though, but we do have so much money. We need the help. Let's get him on. And lastly, let's do TJ Edwards. He's got green interest in joining us as well. We do need help at linebacker desperately. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be five for five. Let's go ahead and hit eval. And everybody is gone. But is everybody a Chicago Bear? No. Only three are, but one of them is Deron Payne, which was the biggest one, I think. And then TJ Edwards and Jack Conklin, but no Odell, huh? Odell goes to the Patriots. Okay. Oh, and we missed out on Marcus Davenport. That one kind of hurt. He goes to the Texans, huh? What in the world? And why did my Dolphins sign Devin single carries? Dang, well, are there any edge rushers left? And Gawkway actually has green interest. 28 years old, though, and only 78 overall. Hmm. Honestly, I think a two-year deal is fine. Like I said, we have a ton of money, so we have a ton of flexibility to work with anyway. So let's just get some depth and some veterans. Oh, wait, Murphy bunting would be sick. Green interest, too. Everybody loves the Windy City, baby. I'll bump it for his money a little bit. And then for wideouts, there's not much I like here, like Hardman, Shepard, Landry. I don't really care. <laughs> Actually, though, I'm going to get AJ Green because he's a mentor, and the mentor is the most important thing in this game. And Gakwe, Sean Murphy bunting, and AJ Green are a part of your Chicago Bears. No, I think we only got two of them. Who was the other guy? It was Ngakwe, wasn't it? Dude, didn't he want to join us? Whatever, I'll draft an edge, man. Hopefully. It is now draft season, though, and we are going to have pick number 13. 10, okay, even better. So I did just private work out some more people. I'm not going to lie, though. This class isn't the best. Cam Burt is only around one talent there. We also did... I did this tight end, Marco Acosta. He's down here at, like, 28-ish. Actually, looks kind of good. Only 21 years old as well out of USC. Elite acceleration. Everything else above good, which is what you like to see. A awareness, a pass block, run block as well, catching traffic, spec catch, whoa, a do it all tight end. He could most definitely be my pick here. And tell you what, we are at pick number 10 now, and he's still all the way down here at 27. And I'm not gonna lie, all of these offers kind of suck. Nobody's offering me, like, in the 20s, in the 2023 draft, except for the Eagles here to go to 14. I'm just gonna accept it. A future third and fourth as well, I guess I'll take it. Hmm, and I'll tell you what I want to do right now. The Bucks have pick number 30, right? Look at their QB now. No more Brady. It is Taylor Heineken. You know who I have my eyes on as well? This guy right here. Could we potentially trade back to number 14 as well as grab Chris Godwin? Let's do maybe a current fourth and let's try a future third. Why not just start it off right there? Oh. It's accepted. Just like that. We move back 16 spots and we also get our new clear wide receiver one to finally get some help for Justin Fields. And we have a great we have a great offense now. A great offense now with Chris Godwin, 90 overall superstar on the way. And we only had to give up an extra fourth and a future third round pick. I'll take that all day long. I definitely did not expect that to go through right away, but we are now here at pick number 30. And let's pray that tight end. It's still there, and here he is. Do I take him now that we get Godwin, though? Well, I guess I traded down to do that, right? But my this defense is not too great. But you know what? We don't care about the defense. We want to crack out this offense to its full potential, and I'm going to take Marco Acosta right now to beat and to add another weapon to Justin Fields with David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, Chris Godwin. Now Cole Komet's already here. Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney, Justin Fields, and now... Marco Acosta, the hidden development tight end out of USC, who's only still just 21 years old as well, and has himself 91 acceleration, 86 speed. He looks like a real, real gem. Not really. I chose him in the first round, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and I'm hoping now in the second round, I'm not going to start, you know, bolstering up that defense now. And look at this guy right here, Devontae Trainer, pass coverage, linebacker here out of LSU, A zone coverage, A to B pursuit and tackling there, physical attributes. Ooh. Great in acceleration, agility, change of direction, speed as well. Combine, pretty good. Number two in three cone drill and 20 yard shuttle. This guy might be a gem. He's around three to four projection. We're going to take him in round two because I see the value. A man, a zone. He's mine. Devontae Trainer. Hidden 
development as well. This guy, now this guy is a gem. Looks like an absolute beast. Welcome to the team. Might be my best linebacker already. And now we have number 10 in the third round. I'm, no, I'm looking for another linebacker. Actually, wait, no, 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 no. Hold up. Oh, I hope he's still there. He is still here. Reggie Hunter, the guy that I private worked out in week 11. Look at how crazy he looks. A awareness, A impact block. I know you can't see it now, but A impact block, B pass block, B run block. 23 years old out of North Carolina, which is add more depth and help to our offensive line. He also has elite agility and change of direction with great speed and acceleration. Number one, vert jump, broad jump, three cone drill, 20 yard shuttle. Reggie freaking Hunter is our new left guard of the future another hidden development we are two for two and we're banging it away no we're actually three for three also somebody in my last video said i'm going in and fixing all of these rookies development traits to rig it or whatever yeah these videos take about three to four hours to make i'm definitely not wasting my time doing that <laughs> daniel rogers a zone but he's only a c tackle for a linebacker that's not great now his ratings are decent though i might just bang on the athlete here we're in round four anyway can we go a perfect draft we cannot that's okay, though. Normal dev. He's just going to be deaf and just another option on our team. Dang, I should have rigged him to an X Factor, though, man. Yeah, that'd be that'd be so fun, man. <laughs> it's like, genuinely, why would I do that, though? That would literally take all the fun away from drafting, which is my favorite part of doing these rebuilds as well. You can watch all of my videos. It's my favorite part by far. Let's check out our draft, though. Marco Acosta, 74 overall. Not bad, dude. Look at this Reggie Hunter fella. 75 overall. We absolutely reached and chose a bust with Daniel Rogers, but Devontae Trainer 74 as well. How's this tight end though? Of course, 21 years old, 86 speed. We can see his route running is okay around the around the high 60s there. Spec catch in the 80, catching traffic 78. Not bad. He's already pretty much better than Cole Komet anyway. I'm gonna bank on his upside. We just got weapons. We just got weapons now. Devontae Trainer, 22 years old out of LSU, 89 acceleration, 85 speed there. What is his zone? 73. And then wasn't his man like A as well? It's a 64, 87 agility too, 98 stamina. He can run all over the field. Oh, how nice is it to be the Bears though? I can just go up one and we're already into everybody else. Let's check out this class as a whole though. 79, yep, there, here's the wide receiver, Juan Carruthers that we saw, of course. He is hidden development. Goes to the Raiders at number two. Raiders had a bad year. He's only superstar. I say only, it's still good, but... Number two, you know, who is this guy that the Texans chose number one, Reggie Bigsby. If you haven't watched my Texans franchise, go check it out, man. Go check it out. Reggie Bigsby. Ew. Ooh, this linebacker, I did mention him as well. Justin Knowles goes like 17. Actually, tied joint for the second highest overall in the class, I believe, at a 77 overall. Goes to the Cardinals, who have chosen Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins. Now they get another one of these freak linebackers. I, I should have took him. I could have took him, but I traded down. But we also got Chris Godwin, so who am I going to complain, you know? Dang, dang. This class wasn't too bad as a whole, though, for sure. Ooh, ooh, new QB in Green Bay, huh? There's a new king in town, and his name is Justin Fields. As you can see, the QB1 of the newly improved year number two for our rebuild today. We got him weapons now. Chris Godwin, Claypool, and Mooney still developing. Demon, we decided to tag. Khalil Herbert still here. We drafted Acosta to pair alongside Komet. We bolstered the O-line with guys like Conklin, guys like Reggie Hunter as well. And the defense is still a little weird. I won't lie. We got a shining star, though. Brisker up to superstar dev now. Added in Sean Murphy Bunting. Deron Payne is a big addition, as well as TJ Edwards. And we could draft a trainer as well who's looking nice but the real question is who do i private work out huh? no who do i reveal <laughs> I could put it on Reggie Hunter, who's our highest rated guy, but we're also going to get him at midseason pretty comfortably because he is starting at left guard. Marco Acosta or Devontae Trainer? I think I'm going to give it to Acosta, and depending on what he is, we'll determine if we start him over Komet or not, so let's go ahead and do him. He was our first round pick as well, so let's see if we did... I will... Re I, I swear... I swear I didn't do anything. Oh my god, he is superstar freaking x factor are you kidding me bro he didn't even look that crazy that's the thing like i i really didn't know if i wanted him or not like i hesitated last second if we should go for linebacker or edge or something but ladies and gentlemen we made the right decision this guy actually looks nuts like i said for the ninth time he's still 21 as well wow 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 and wow tight end one for surely and at the mid-season mark, tell me we improved. Tell me we're going to be competing in the playoff for a playoff spot at the very, very least with all the new additions in the off-season. Can we see what we are? I don't know why this is taking so long. We are five and freaking two. That is what I'm freaking talking about. We beat the Packers for the first time in a long time. Yes, they might not have Rodgers anymore. Doesn't matter. We beat the Bucks. Lose to the Vikings. That's a tough one. Lose or we... 
kill the Falcons, and we didn't kill them, but we put up 48 points against them, lose to the Chiefs, that's fine, but then we beat the Saints 28-20, and we beat the Cardinals in an absolute shootout. We have an offense to win these games now. I didn't even change playbooks or anything either, which makes it even better. Um, We can check out some more of our hidden developments, our left guard, and then our outside linebacker, Reggie Hunter. Only started to have unfortunate... Stop, 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 stop. We did not draft a superstar X-Factor tight end to have him play fullback. All right, that's not how that works. Trainer? Only start up as well. That's abs where? Huh? Hurt? What? Hello? Our injuries? They're, they're, they're literally off. <laughs> huh? So can you tell me right now why my man's... Where, where'd, he get, where'd he go? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Wait, where's Justin Jones? Now, what's going on? Where is half my team, bro? Injury report? No players. I'm so confused. For whatever reason, TJ Edwards is just hurt or gone or something. No, he's right here, huh? TJ Edwards? He's not even hurt now. What is going on with this game, man? I swear, it's something new every time. Like, is he good or not? Is he good or not? I don't know. Justin Jones? He's literally right here. What is- <laughs> What? But also, a lot of you guys told me to just do it in Dev Chart and it should stay for the- Where is- what is going on? What I was saying though was a lot of you guys told me to just do it in depth chart and then it will stay and not change all this stuff every single week. Okay, I think we're good now. I, I don't really know. That was kind of annoying. We do have scouting positional focus and I see there's a number three on the big board is a middle linebacker. I might go all out for that guy right there. There's a tackle out of Alabama called Ben Diamond. That's a fire name. I actually had one of my cousin's dog was actually named Diamond as well. It was the, it was the cutest little puppy, like a little white fluffy dog. Shut up, bitch! Players, ready to negotiate. Coleman Shelton. Demont is back and his recent interest is little to none. Jalen Johnson, same Mooney, Claypool, Gibson, Komet. Oh no. Justin Jones here as well. Seaman dude. Um, Demont, my guy, why are you so stingy, bro? Like, we're, we're having a good year now for once, for once, right? Will you just rejoin us? That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. Me too. Me too. Jalen Johnson, don't even want to beat around this. Definitely want him back at almost all costs. He's developing nicely as well, up to an 85 overall now, still 24 years old. He's happy to stay with us. Let's go. And tell you what, maybe I wait till the end of the year to resign because team has franchise QB is none right now. Maybe after this season, I'm, I'm banking on Justin Fields getting that tag, hopefully. But then at the same time, Mooney's going to keep developing higher overall, and he's going to demand more money. So it's kind of kind of a double-edged sword. I think I wait, though. I think I wait. Gibson, I kind of want back. And he wants to join back as well. Green interest, so he's here to stay. Let's go. Coco met after we drafted um, that Acosta dude. I don't, we just really don't need him anymore, even though he's quite decent. Justin Jones, other hand... 70, it's weak. I can't even do it yet. <laughs> it is just about playoff time, and could we build off our amazing start? 5-2 and two to start off the year. We go 8-9 and nine and miss the offs, bro? What in the world? An absolute historic choke jobs by the boys. Are you kidding me? We beat the Vikings in huh? week 8, had a bye week. We beat the Raiders, and then everything just fell apart. Broncos L, Lions L, Ravens L, Packers L beat the Lions in the second matchup, but out of the Panthers, out of the Eagles, we beat the Chargers. What in the world? So we went three and seven in the second half of the year, dude. Why? Why, why, why? As Jacoby Brissett is the passing leader. I see you, 55. I'm a got you, 55. Dude, what? Offensive yards, 18th. Defensive, yeah, okay, we, we gotta change that playbook for sure. Fields actually went crazy, bro. I won't even lie. 4,239 yards, 38 touchdowns, 12 picks. That's amazing. Like I said, I didn't change any playbooks, so he did that himself. Rushing-wise, Demont was still really good. 1,131 yards, 4.8 to carry, 9 touchdowns as well. Fields, Herbert, really good as well. I mean, the offense definitely wasn't the problem. Godwin, 1,224 yards, 11 touchdowns. Mooney, 10 touchdowns, 900 yards. Claypool was doing a whole lot of nothing. I won't lie, and Acosta... I need you to get I need to get you more involved because come on now, bro. Actually, I blame the first half of the season when they messed all my stuff up. Trainer led the way for tackles. That's cool to see. 112 for him. TFLs 21 for Gibson, 19 for Deron Payne, 13 for my boy Muhammad there. Eight and a half sacks for Gibson, seven and a half for Payne, three and a half for Justin Jones. Pick wise, three for Murphy Bunting, but after that, we really didn't have too much. Fumbles, and we only had two as well. So this defense just got no takeaways. They were just out here doing cardio. And like what a freaking year for Justin Fields as well. We wasted that. We wasted that one. You know, hopefully this year there are some crazy, crazy good defensive players in free agency. League MVP is none other than the throwing fullback. That is Josh Allen, number two, though. You already know. And Brissette's on the Commanders. 
And he won't, he was like the passing leader, right? Is there a playbook like that? I'm expecting some rookies here, although actually probably not. We didn't we didn't really do too much. Yeah, Costa's number eight defensive goes to Cam Burr. I did private workout this guy, but he went ahead of me. Who did I even have here? Trainer, he's number six. Fields gotta be in here, right? Top five, we'll take that. Wait, Roger's still here. Don't matter, he's washed anyway. Aaron Jones does the best one there. No Demont. Ooh, Tevin Jenkins? Best old line, top five. We're gonna be upgrading to superstar dev, of course, because of the old line rule. Who the heck is Roosevelt Mentor? Roosevelt Mentor, that's crazy. Dude was born in the 1800s or something. Devies! Devies, dude, what are you doing? Why is he, okay, I need to sign a fullback, I guess. That's why he was getting wasted, because he was playing fullback half the year for whatever reason. I don't know. No Devies, though, on offense, which kind of sucks. How, okay, no, hold up, hold up. The offense was the shining star this year. This is the this is the unit that put in the work, put up the numbers, and I didn't get one. Not for Fields, not for Demont, not for Godwin, not for Mooney. But defense that was mid, that was trash, we get a lot. But we do get Trainer, we do get Gibson, both kind of nice, and both ones that we will definitely take. Nothing else though. I want Jalen Johnson to go up. Would love Kyler Gordon to go up one as well. Still kind of mad at that generational choke job we had in the second half. But and the Brownies are the Super Bowl champions, 31-20, beating out the Eagles. Their Super Bowl MVP is none other than Nick Chubb. Best running back in the league. Contracts, and why Why are these guys in front? Why is Brendan Schooler the first one here, and Arden Key? Like, what in the world? Claypool, or Mooney, does have interest now because Justin Fields is now a franchise QB, which you absolutely love to see. Big deal for Mooney. He's one of our absolute own. Bumped up the money for him as well, and he's happy to stay because of it. Claypool, I honestly wouldn't mind moving on, but this video is, like, semi about him as well. He's probably in the thumbnail, too. They just traded for him. Like, it's kind of, you know, the big thing right now. I guess I'll keep him around literally just for that reason. <laughs> so, he's back. Even though he's doing a whole lot of nothing out there. It's all right, though. We still have 99 mil to spend. It ain't a problem. Comment Jones. I'd actually, I wouldn't mind Justin Jones. Maybe a two-year deal. He doesn't want the most money as well, and he's actually happy to stay. Shout out to him. Comment can probably walk in. Let's go to free agency, and hopefully we got some bangers. Because last year, the headline man was Odell Beckham, and he was good. But let's be real. He's not, he's not the biggest name. And this year, <laughs> we have Nick Bosa. We have Derrick Henry. We have Rashad Gary. We have Justin Herbert. Hollywood Brown, Gabe Davis, CJ Gardner, Johnson, Tyler, Boyd, Jordan, Brooks, and Oliver. The names just go on and on and on and on and on and on. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to hesitate. I want Nick Bosa and I want him now. All right. So I'm going to give him a team friendly deal with green interest. He had a little bit of interest on us as well. And we look, it looks like we're number one and we still got 55 mil left. No problem. Actually, can I get a mentor at QB? Gino. I gotta get Gino. That's the problem. Who the heck is this guy? You know what? We need a fullback, so I'm gonna sign it. Ooh, Patrick Queen up to superstar? Say less. Say less. And let's try to get a nice little like CB4, CB3. Bryce Hall would actually be really good for that. Hell, probably even CB2. Let's go to target though. Nick Bosa, Patrick Queen, Bryce Hall, this Pritchett guy, and of course, Gino Smith. Let's go ahead and eval. Bryce Hall still Pritchett, Gino Smith, but my signings. We got the man. We got the man. I feel like I've tried to sign him in so many rebuilds and I have not gotten him ever, but he is finally here. He is a Chicago Bear, Nick Bosa. Welcome. And we also got superstar Patrick Queen. The offense was good last year. The defense let us down, but now we got these two studs. And what, what are you three doing? Come on. Well, hello? Eval again. Bryce Hall is still being stingy. We do get Pritchett and Gino though. Shout out to them, I guess. <laughs> Bryce Hall, you literally have no other offers, my guy. I'll bump up your deal a little bit, I guess. And like, you better join now. Hold on, I can't even Eval anymore. Did we get him? He is still- Bryce Hall, are you alright, my guy? Thank you, you stingy son of a bitch. <laughs> We do have a fifth year option here, and this one is for Justin Fields. I'm going to accept it because we have a lot of money out right now. So to get him on a nice little fifth year contract won't be too bad for the squad. The first fifth year option I've accepted all year. <laughs> Private workouts. Let's see what this class is about. Oh my God. Jamie Brooks. Elite acceleration, agility, jumping speed with great change of direction. Crazy comment. This dude's around a three to four projection, dude. What in the world? We actually have him 95% already. I'm going to keep doing him though. Pause. I'm going to do this safety, Daryl Sloan. And then there was a center that looked insane. Both these guys look really good. I'm going to put it on Levi McKee and let's see. As we start the 2024 NFL Draft Jets, number one pick. We're actually at 11. I thought it would be kind of lower, but we were trash. Yeah, this Levi McKee though, the center, look at his physical stats. Great, 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 great. And then elite strength combine did not finish below second. 
out of all the centers. He looks really good. Round a two to three guy as well, so hopefully I can get him next round maybe. And then I did the outside linebacker, right? He's around one to two, going round three to four projection. That is awesome. And then the safety, Daryl Sloan, A hit power, D man, but B tackle, B zone, 22 out of Car North Carolina, 5'9", zone archetype ratings are... All right, they're all right. Oh, really? This guy was, a, as you can see, this guy's a top five projection. He was like number three on the big board. He is still available at our pick at number 10. Ratings are pretty good. Elite speed, skip the combine like an absolute baller as well. A awareness, A zone, A to B man, B power moves, B pursuit, A hit power, B impact block, A to B catching. Whoa, we are kind of loaded at linebacker now, but it wouldn't hurt. It, we, we're just going best player available, you know? But like the only thing that would sway me if there's a really good edge rusher. Although we do have Bosa and Gibson went up to superstar. So it's not the biggest need as well. I might just go, I might just go with the best player available. That might be Morris Nance, but we have that linebacker later on as well. Huh? Maybe we go a lot. Maybe we go old line Thomas Ramsey. John Conklin's not going to be here for the future, you know? This guy sucks, though. And I'm not going to lie, the O-line kind of mid as well, I'll be honest with you. I'm just going to go more stance. Why not? We're just going to bolster up this front seven. We're going to have so much depth and so much of everything. We got to make this defense good because we need them to keep on pace with the offense that was so, so good last year. Morris Nance fell to me for whatever reason at pick number 10, but he is still hidden development. 23 years old out of Miami, 93 speed with 89 acceleration. He is a beast of an athlete and is going to be the man in the middle. In round number two now, and that trait or that Sloan dude is still there, that safety, but I think I just got my eyes on Levi McKee. He looks too good. You guys saw him earlier. He's an absolute beast. 22 years old out of UCLA. Hidden Dev once again, 92 strength for the big man in the middle, 83 acceleration as well. I don't know why I'm pointing that out. He's a center. He's good. And into the third round now, it is pick number 31 though. That outside linebacker might be gone and he is. It's a good thing we took that uh, first guy then. Dang, I actually kind of wanted this guy though. Like that dude was a gem, man. Is there a kicker? We actually got one. Josh Goldstein. Finally, bro. I always look for a freaking elite kicker, generational kicker. I've never seen one. We finally got one. I'm not going to choose him yet, but I will choose him. That's for dang sure. Oh, actually, we need a backup tight end because Cole Komet's gone now, huh? And Dole in Schultz, brother, is insane. Hold your horses. Acceleration, agility, jumping, speed, all elite. What in the world? Day three projection with A awareness, so he's going to be a good rating. Decent medium route with B, A catch in traffic as well. Backup tight end. I cannot complain with Dave Schultz. We might have just found a gem all the way down here in round number four. Oh my god. No, was that round number three? No, round number three. End of round number three. It's basically round number four. Okay, well, we're actually in round number four now, and I'm not going to hesitate. I'm going to take my boy Josh Goldstein out of Buffalo, the generational kicker. Tell me the music is playing because this guy deserves it with his elite kick power. Josh Goldstein. Is that normal? I thought he was generational, bro. He had elite click power. Oh, that's pain. Okay, never. That was so anticlimactic. Then what the heck? I guess I guess he needs to have a kick accuracy too. Huh? I think it was, his was only a B. Whatever though, as long as he doesn't double don't. Draft to recap time, and we got Morris. He's a 79. Oh my God, Schultz is 74. Not bad as well. McKee 75. Goldstein's actually only 70, 69. Who did they just draft me? The CPU got me Caleb Levins in the fifth round, I believe. 76 overall. Not bad as a project wide receiver later on. What a draft though. Goldstein let me down, bro. <laughs> I really thought he was him, bro. I really thought he was him. Overall, Morris, dude, how did he fall to me? He was a top five projection. Let's actually go check him out. He is such a beast. 23 years old. He's a little bit older, yes, but I mean, my God, we saw his physical attributes and those were already amazing, but he also has 87 tackling, 86 hit power, 85 pursuit, 83 awareness, 70 zone, 66 man's not even that bad. This dude's a beast and was the highest rated guy in the class by two overalls. There we got two running backs here, a safety at the end of the first round, David Gary. Um, this class was... All right, who did I want? I wanted that outside linebacker, right? Was it this guy? It was this guy, right? Jamie Brooks, who had the crazy physical stats, is in our division as well. He is a star. It's not the end of the world. We got Nance already, so it didn't really matter as well, but I guess it would have been nice. And it looks like the Jets have moved 
on from Zach Wilson, but they got to bust again. <laughs> kind of want to check that tackle. I was considering Thomas Ramsey goes to the Raiders. Hidden Dev. Is he going to be special? He's only star and will probably get cut by the Raiders in a few years. <laughs> As we are now into year three of this rebuild, if you guys are still here, please make sure to leave a like on this video if you haven't already. And of course, comment down below which team you guys would like to see me do next. This is the squad though that we got. Fields under center, still developing 79 overall. Actually, very surprised he didn't go up to superstar last year. Thought he definitely could have deserved it with 38 touchdowns and like 14 picks. But the offense is still amazing. McKee is here now as well. Acosta is our true tight end one now. We got Schultz right behind him. This defense, I mean, my God, we added in guys like Nick Bosa. We drafted Nance at a linebacker, and our linebacker group is stacked now with Trainer, Edwards, Queen, and him, of course. I think this is the year. I think this may be the year where everything finally comes together. And we also changed the defensive playbook to the San Francisco 49ers. I've never used their playbook, but it's got to be better than what we were last year, right? I hope it's good. And you know what? For the specialists, I might actually start Nance and Queen. I'm sorry, TJ Edwards, but these guys are them. Mid-season mark is about here, and I won't be fooled. I won't be fooled like I was last year when we started off 5-2 and two and got my hopes up, and then we decided to just collapse in the second half hopefully this year we can maintain it throughout the whole year as we're four and three at the midseason mark second in the division but tied with the packers there that's all right that's all right but let's of course go check out our hidden development traits we're not going to have our rookie center yet but maybe show it's most likely not yet we don't have any of them defense i had nance i'm actually very intrigued to see what he is we don't even have him yet hello how close is he because he's playing sub linebacker right 313 not even close Wait, I could have revealed someone. I have 177. I totally forgot to do that. Why do we have 90 receivers? Wait, why are people hurt? Nah, what is going on? Is this a new glitch, dude? Their yeah, injuries are clearly off, as you can see. Like, why are people getting hurt? Oh, pra is it practice injury? I forgot to turn that off. I turned off career clock instead. Okay, I see. I, that's on me. That's on me. Dang, really? Even with the injuries off practice? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But And you know who I'm going to reveal? Mm, I don't know. I was going to say I'm going to do my center just to see. Maybe we just start him right now. He looked really crazy too. You know what? I'm going to do it. We're going to do Levi McKee. Because <laughs> Nance is already playing, right? He's already on the field. We know what he's about. But McKee is sitting out this year. And he's going to keep sitting out this year. Because he's only a freaking star. Players who need a contract, though. We actually only have about 56 mil left. We've spent a lot of money. And we paid a lot of people. Chris Godwin is now here. And he's definitely going to want the bag. Eddie Jackson, 30 years old now. Cody Whitehair, Tevin Jenkins, Khalil Herbert. Some good players. Alex Leatherwood, another great one. Gino. Let's go. Um, Godwin, I'm not too sure. Obviously, he's the best receiver here. But we're already paying Mooney and Claypool now. I think I'm going to hold off on him. We're probably not going to sign him back. It's just too much. Eddie Jackson might just be too old now. White hair, same with him as well. And we have McKee as his backup. Jenkins, though, definitely do want. And we'll make it a five-year deal. Bump it up a little bit as well. He does have yellow interest. The offer is perfect, and so are you. And ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. It's about that time for the playoffs. Tell me we are not fraudulent. We are fraudulent. What in the world? Eight? What? What is wrong with us? Okay, it's time to change the offensive playbook, I guess. I mean, last year we were good, so I kept it. But 17th this year is unacceptable. Defense, 17th as well. Probably getting changed as well, honestly. Fields, 4,000 yards. We need more than that, I'll be honest. 31 touchdowns, 14 picks. Not bad, but not an improvement, which is what we needed. Demont was all right. 1,300 yards, 4.6, 12 tutties for him, 10 for Carl Leo Herbert, 5 for Fields as well. A lot of win, 1,045 yards, 10 touchdowns. Dude, we, we're going to lose him now as well. I should have changed to a high-powered offense, man, because the offensive stats really just weren't there. Tackles, Patrick Queen, 91. TFLs, 20 for Bosa. 18 sacks for him as well. 17 TFLs for Deron Payne. 15 for Gibson. And then 7 sacks for Payne. Gibson, 6. Interception, 6 for Sean Murphy Bunting. That's nice. 2 for TJ Edwards. Patrick Queen. Another disappointing year, though. Another 8-9 and nine season. MVP is, once again, the throwing fullback. And tell you what, I also forgot to um, make Tevin Jenkins a superstar, which he deserves for finishing top 5 last year. And Herbert's on the Falcons now. Okay, yeah, we're going to have nobody here. Tevin Jenkins makes it again for good measure. <laughs> Ooh, Sean Murphy Bunting is your best DB, though. And did I see that correct? Jason Sanders' best kicker? I will never say those words in my life. Another disappointing year, though. Another disappointing year, and offensively, Schultz is only a star. Fields, once again, does not go up. Demon doesn't go up. Nobody goes up. Have we gotten one Devi on the offense besides Tevin Jenkins, I guess? We have not. We really just haven't. Defensively, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Murphy, okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. hold up. Were you a Superstar X-Factor, or did you go up to Superstar X-Factor? 
He is a superstar X Factor. Oh my god, I should have revealed him. Why did I reveal a center that wasn't even playing? Morris Nance! Our superstar, our second superstar X Factor of the day. Are you kidding me? Well, if one thing's going for us, we're drafting really well. Trainer up to superstar X Factor as well. Sean Murphy bunting up to superstar after an amazing year too. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm mad. I'm, I'm upset. I'm in a bad mood. I want to be competing. We're in year three now. The squad is as good as it's going to be. Honestly, I don't know if we're going to re-sign Chris Godwin. I guess maybe we could and just really go all out here. We got a rematch in the Super Bowl here, but this time the Bengals come away victorious and they blow out the Niners. 49-28. Super Bowl MVP is Joe Contracts and Godwin, of course, here. Eddie Jackson, Cody Whitehair, Khalil Herbert. We do have 69 mil to spend, though. I mean, I just don't know if he's going to accept almost any deal we give him to be honest we're gonna have to pay fields next year as well ah i don't know his tags are a trade target which is kind of weird I'm, I'm i'm honestly gonna let him walk we traded for him things just did not work out ow which sucks yes but at the same time we did trade down that draft 16 spots and we're able to draft acosta a superstar x-factor tight end but let's go to free agency now where we got a lot of money to spend here 69 mil kyle pitts is here Jalen. Waddle is here as well. Godwin, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Fournette, Kadarius, Tony. Yeah, we got some good names here. So we could use another receiver, but remember, they drafted me this Levens, dude, in like round five. 77 overall as a wide receiver three is definitely not too bad. I need to change Tevin Jenkins. <laughs> Probably driving some of you OGs nuts. All right, I'm sorry. He's superstar. Other than that, the offense is all right. We need safety now. Eddie Jackson's gone, but corners were looking really good. Maybe just backup safeties. Maybe another linebacker or two, maybe a better defensive tackle. I might go in for Tony here. He doesn't want the most absurd deal at all. He's an 86 overall, 26 years old, and I feel like would fit in our offense very nicely with Mooney as our deep threat, Claypool as our physical guy, and Tony can be the guy that we could just dump it off to and he can just make some magic. And we're the only offer for him as well, so it's nice to see. And then we got some backups here in Epps, Wilson, and Heineke, so not, not too much here. Um, everybody's gone and everybody is here and everyone is a Chicago Bear. Let's go. Wow. We might have a generational corner in this class. He is the number one overall dude. So I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to get him. But if he looks like he looks like right now, I might have to trade up and get him. He's only 21. He's out of Bama. Elite acceleration, agility, speed. He looks really freaking good. Kelvin Ridgeway here. I am going to put one on him for sure. What I'm looking for in the draft, though, is safety. And Terrence Barnett looks pretty dang good. A to B hip power, B man, zone, tackle. Not bad. And yeah, I forgot. We were trash again. So it probably wouldn't be too hard to trade up anyway. We're pick 15 actually though. And we're not going to have him 100%, but he is 90. And let's see. A to B awareness, A catching, hit power, injury, tackling, press, man, B zone. Wow. Ooh. Terrence Barnett though is a top five talent. Okay, so we might save my pick for him then for sure. We are pick 15. Where is Barnett projected to go? 22 that's a little scary i'm gonna jump to number nine here just to make sure i can get him what we need is safety and that man is going to be terrence barnett our top five talent we've already drafted two superstar x factors in this video already can we make it three? Oh, we we definitely cannot because he's not even he's not even hidden he's a freaking normal Top five talent and normal. Ooh, and this guy's still here. I private worked out him as well. Billy, Billy Messina. Doesn't look too bad. Ohio State run stopper defensive tackle. Looks quite good. Physical stats, good, great, solid, decent, good, great. That's it for me. I'm going to take him and it's going to be another hidden dev for us. Lovely stuff. Not bad. Just a rotational guy in the middle. Then third round pick. Let's take one of these linebackers because they're always cracked down the board. Antonio Sandburn. Looks pretty decent. It's good enough for me, to be honest with you. He is only normal. He's a depth piece. It's all right. Draft recap. Not the most eventful draft for sure. Barnett's top five, but only 76 overall. Messina's a 74. Sandburn is a beast. 61 overall. Nice job. Oh, oh, he was. Oh, my God, he was. I got blinded by the top five talent. I should have just traded up. I should have just traded up. Oh, my God. 85 overall generational i am so stupid why didn't i just do it i got blinded by the top five bro 96 speed 95 acceleration 85 man 77 zone 95 agility 89 catch <laughs> oh my goodness a generational corner you know 
That is actually pretty insane. But now I'm just mad at myself for not trading up. I literally was about to do it. Why did Barnett have to be a top five talent? Of course, he's going to be an X Factor. He is generational. And I have fumbled the bag. He would have changed the franchise around, bro. Oh my god. Can't believe I missed him. Cannot believe I missed him. Of course, he's the highest overall guy in the class. Everybody else sucks. Uh, could you imagine I had a generational cornerback at the age of 21 on this defense? Could you imagine? Instead, we have this freaking bum named Barnett. But this is the team heading into year four. Nothing much has changed here, but what did change is, of course, the playbooks. I'm rocking double Buffalo. I've not tried Buffalo yet this year. I've, I've been always using the Chiefs, but the Chiefs have screwed me sometimes as well. I'm going to try out the Bills, but I'm hoping for a big year from the offense and the defense. Mooney still our wide receiver one, of course. We brought in Tony now. Acosta, Fields still developing. This defense is insane with superstars and X-Factors everywhere, and even the stars are guys like Deron Payne and Jay Johnson, so it ain't too bad, huh? And at the midway point, we are four and two, but we are top of this bummy division where everybody else has 32 wins. <laughs> um, did we even have development traits to go over? I don't really know. We don't because it, it, we draft Barnett. <laughs> And now we got guys like Brisker needing a contract. Justin Fields, Justin Jones, Kyler Gordon, Braxton Jones. We do have 67 mil. And Fields actually would love to say as well, which you'd love to see. We'll bump the bonus up to 10 mil. And he is back for seven years. Still 38 mil remaining in cap. Jaquan Brisker doesn't have the most interest, but we'll make it a friendly deal and even bump up the money. He's here to stay as well. He's been amazing. Superstar dev right away. And everybody else, I think I'll wait on. We are now at playoff time. I am crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. We're finally here. We also have a breakout DB in the playoffs as well in the wildcard round where we are going to be playing the New York Giants. Let's go, man. But first, let's check out some stats as we were eighth in offensive yardage. Not bad at all. Fields looked like he had a decent year defensively. Number six, that's more like it. And Fields, almost 5,000 yards. They're just about 170 short. 36 touchdowns to 13 picks. Really good year. Has to go up to superstar, right? David Montgomery, 1,014. What am I saying? 1,400 yards for him. Over five a carry. 16 touchdowns as well insane your field still did his thing on the ground too dar no mooney 1500 yards 12 touchdowns as our wide receiver one that is more like it Kadarius tony 1100 yards six touchdowns claypool with seven and just about 900 across the 730 he hasn't been doing too much which is kind of disappointing i don't really know how to get tight ends involved though 126 tackles for morris nance leads the way tfls we got 17 16 14 and 12 respectively and sack numbers 24 and a half, half for none other than Nick Bosa, eight and a half for Travis Gibson there, and then pick wise, Jalen Johnson with four, Nance three, Barnett with two. Just gonna compare it with this guy to make me mad. He had three, of course he did. What even is he now? He's a, he's an 89 overall, 21 years old superstar. <laughs> Who is this Brett Cobb dude, bro? Put up 6,000 yards, 55 touchdowns. He had to get drafted to the Bucks or something. Let's check out this breakout DB. Uh, <laughs> Of course it is. Of course it is. It's it's Terrence Barnett. Tell you what, if he can get this done, I'll 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 be happy. I guess I don't know. We got the Giants wild card round. They're ten and seven. We're eleven and six. Daniel Jones versus Justin Fields. The battle of the century. I I'm blaming Terrence Barnett. We were too focused on getting Terrence Barnett his freaking breakout instead of winning the game. And guess what? He didn't even get it. This guy, all of my homies hate Terrence Barnett, man. Yep, yep, here he is, Brett Cobb, 13 and four Buccaneers, 87 overall now. I mean, what in the world? Fields, not in here? Kind of drunk if you ask me. Nick Bosa is your offense or defensive player of the year. Where's Fields for best QB? Eighth? Hold up, what is going on in the Commanders? They have Derrick Henry and they have Tua as well. They just revamped the entire team. Darnell Mooney is six for best wide receiver, how? An improvement season, yes, but still a disappointing one as a whole. I how does Fields not go up to Superstar, man? Mooney went up to Superstar though, as I accidentally switched to the defense, but I didn't want to see it. I don't know how Fields isn't going up. He's honestly putting it through some decent seasons for us, man. 30 touchdowns each year. Defensively, Jalen Johnson finally goes up to Superstar, which is nice. Barnett went up anyway. I, I don't care. <laughs> Wait, did I just skip the Super Bowl? I think I did. Um, The Bengals won another one, 32-27. Do, do I need to try Bengals playbook? Like, they're on fire. Heading into year five now, though, most likely the last season might just go crazy. I'll be honest with you because I'm getting mad. We have an 88 offense, 89 defense, 89 overall squad, and we, can, we don't have a playoff win. We literally do not have a playoff win yet. McCaffrey, Kamara, Orlando Brown. We got some names here. Who the heck is this? Logan Cook? 
Wait, it drops off an absolute cliff. 88, 86, and then all the way down to 83. Um, I'm signing McCaffrey, and there's nothing you guys can do about it. We need to win, and I'm giving him everything. We still have 40 mil left as well. But we actually did lose Braxton Jones, so yeah. Um, Orlando Brown, definitely the move here. McCaffrey, Orlando Brown, and <laughs> Logan Cook himself is here. They've all been evaluated, and... Ooh, Orlando Brown did not join us. We did get McCaffrey, which is awesome. We did get Logan Cook, which is amazing. Orlando Brown not joining is tough, though. I won't lie. There's not really anything else at the tackle position. We can get Braxton Jones back. He does have interest as well, but you know what I'm going to do. I was going to trade it for a left tackle, but let's let's make sure there's no generational left tackles in this class. <laughs> Looks like there's not. I'm going to go to the draft, though, and I'm probably going to just trade our picks, to be honest, because we are absolutely in win-now mode. I'm in the hottest seat possible, as I have not led us to any playoff wins yet we can get an 88 rated jonah williams that sounds nice already crazy deals here jc jackson clyde Edwards, dealers a 92 overall gallop singletary my lotta is the one i have my eyes on evan neal okay we are talking aaron donald <laughs> Lermy tunsil is here as well okay yeah we got some great great possibilities on what we can do i think Evan, you are my lotta. I'm going to do my lotta. Actually, wait. No, I was checking to see what the other player was. It's Shaquem Hawthorne. I don't really care about him. Let's get Jordan my lotta. He's my new starting left tackle. And with this pick, I kind of just need depth at defensive end. We don't really have much after our first guys. I'm just going to go Dewan Rivers. He probably sucks, but it's all right. It's all right. And highest guy is only 78. No generational guys. So let's get ourselves into year number five where we have added guys like Christian McCaffrey. With just the 93 David Montgomery behind him. We added in Jordan Mailata, a 90 rated left tackle. A huge, huge improvement off of Braxton Jones, who, we've, who we have had for the last four seasons. The defense looks spectacular, honestly. It's so colorful. Silvers, golds, reds, everything you need. We got it. I'm staying in Buffalo Bills offensive and defensive playbooks again. It did us pretty well last year, so... I'll see you guys when I see you. And it's about that time again. Playoff time. Week 18. Wild card round, we are here and we got a rematch of last year's game against the New York Giants. This division also is just sad now. Everybody's seven wins besides us. Once again, we were eighth in offensive yardage and 18th in defensive yards. That went down for some reason, even though I feel like we got better on defense, right? I don't know. Fields, though, another great year. 4,800 yards for him. 40 touchdowns to 14 picks is what you like to see. Maybe a little too many picks, but it's fine. McCaffrey, 1,400 yards, about five carries. Same for Fields. Demont, even with 4.3. Six tutties for him, two for Fields, 19 for CMC. Mooney, once again, crazy year. 1,300 yards, four touchdowns for him. Claypool, eight touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards there. Tony was decent. Acosta, 10 end zone um, touches, and McCaffrey with eight. Morris Nance, 165 tackles, way more than anybody else on the team. 23 TFLs for Deron Payne, 16 for Bosa, 11 and 10 for Messina and somebody else? I don't remember. Gibson, it was Gibson, 18 for Nick Bosa though for sacks, Gibson, 12 and a half, 8 and a half for Deron Payne, 4 picks for Bryce Hall, Jalen Johnson, and Sean Murphy Bunting, 2 for Brisker. And we are back in the wild card round, getting a rematch. Can we get our revenge on the New York Giants? They're only 9 and 8 this year, please. Can we get our first playoff win of the video? We kill them, actually. 48-27, as we now have the Carolina Panthers, who are a hot opponent. I think I'm going to hop in. They got an 85 overall squad. We are a 92. They got X-Factors in Brian Burns, DJ Moore, and then Jonathan Glass, a right end. And it's snowing here. Yeah, who the heck is that? Who is their QB? We got kind of like a Christian McCaffrey revenge game as well. As we get the first touchdown of the game, 7 0 7 3. Now they get a field goal. End of the first quarter, we get another touchdown at the very last second, though, which you love to see. 14 3 lead for us in this divisional round. No touchdowns for them just yet, but three for us as we go up by 12 points to end off the first half. Things are looking good, but it's not over until it's over. Let's start the second half hot. We do four touchdowns. It is 28-9. It is 35-9. We are absolutely steam rolling through Carolina. I'm just going to assume the end of the game. I think we are good. We get another touchdown. 42-9. They have still not scored a touchdown. We win 45-9. Dominant performance. This is what I expected from this team early on. But it looks like now, finally in year five, we're starting to hit our stride. And we're getting hot at the right moment. Let's go. Some notable stats, Fields 21 for 30, 219 yards, but three touchdowns, no picks, perfect. McCaffrey, 110 yards for 5.7 a carry, one touchdown, and two touchdowns for Demont with 7.4 a carry, wow. And in the NFC Conference Championship, we are going to get the Dallas 
Cowboys, who are 12 and 5, have themselves an 86 overall squad, 89 offense, or 89 defense with an 85 offense. What am I doing? I would love to hop in to the conference championship here and see if we can finally get ourselves into the Super Bowl. They still got their guys, Micah, Travon, and of course, Zeke. He's not washed yet. I don't know about that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and kick it off here. First quarter on the way. We get the first point of the game to go up 3-0, but they get two quick successive touchdowns there to go up 14-3 at the end of the first quarter, but we respond nicely, hold them to a field goal, and tie the game up. Two-minute warning, but they do get a field goal at the end of the first half. We cannot capitalize and respond to tie up the game, but first half is done, and we now go up by four points in the second half. We got a thriller here. And it looks like we got a fourth and one on the 48. Do we go for this? We're going for it. How? This is how you start off the fourth quarter. Justin Fields, lead us to the promised land. When we need you most, you hand it off to McCaffrey, and he's going to get the job done as well. As we now get a first and 10 onto the 50, into their territory, Justin Fields dropping back. Good protection. Hits it out right side. He's got room, the superstar man. Who is that? That's our, that's our tight end. Why is, he, why is he not X Factor? Hello? Guess I didn't buy the thing in the staff or whatever it is. Feels another great pass to Acosta. Again, he's breaking tackles left and right. It's another first down for the tight end. As we head into the Cowboys red zone, onto the 15. Fields once again dropping back to pass the ball here. And it's a wide open man. I'm not sure who that is. It's Kadarius Tony, the man we signed just last season, comes through for us to give us a lead of 31-27. We got an amazing game here in the conference championship. Let's see if our defense can hold out the Cowboys. Though. That's all we need. We just need one stop and our offense to be back on the field. It looks like we're doing that third and 10. Defense putting in the work against Dak Prescott, Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott, CD Lamb, Dak. Find CD Lamb for a huge, huge third down conversion there. Dak now an empty on their own 48. Drops back once again. Pressure is getting to him, but he finds a gap on the right side. He fumbles. We recover the ball. Oh my God, can we take this one to the house? Is it a scoop and score for Jaquan Brisker? Oh my goodness, the defense comes through. Jaquan Brisker. The super, oh no, it's Jalen Johnson. I forgot he went to the superstar. That's why I thought it was Brisker. Shout out Jalen Johnson then. Huge lead and gives us a little cushion to work with now. Dak Prescott had a lot of room to run with, but just didn't slide and had, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bears around him. That was actually kind of crazy, bro. But we now go up by 11 points with just under seven minutes to go. Defense, I need you again here, but it's a big gain for CD Land on that third down. Ezekiel runs it, but it's a fourth and five. Do they punt? They go for it. And the pass is knocked away by Courtney Rudolph. A Randolph. I literally have no idea who that is. Can our offense step it up, though, and really seal this game away? We're already on to the 26. Wait, dude, who the heck is Courtney Randolph? That might be our CB4 because I think we lost um, Kyler Gordon last year. Huge first down right there, though. It's going to waste more clock. As we head into the Cowboys red zone and are now comfortably, hopefully, in field goal range, which we would go up by two scores, 14 points. But if, of course, we can get a touchdown, we would take that all day long. Second and five now on the 12 after a five-yard run by CMC. We're handing it off to him once again. The blocking isn't the best, but he does manage to get us four yards, giving us a third and one. Is this four down territory? I don't really know. It's a scary one. It definitely is because taking the field goal and going up by 14 definitely would be great. But guess what? Justin Fields is under center. That boy's got ice in his veins. He gets me the first down. And things are looking good here. There's three minutes to go. They still have all their timeouts, of course, but I mean, we got to score from the three, right? Especially with this offense, with every weapon we have, with this O line that we've built up as well. Of course, waste clock. But let's not be afraid to run this bad boy in. Okay, Christian McCaffrey had a nice juke, but to get stopped. The clock kept ticking, though, as it's now after the two minute warning. We hand it once again to Christian McCaffrey, and he gets in. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have punched in our ticket to go to the Super Bowl in year number five. Oh my God, thank the Lord. The boys just clutched up. The defense, the offense, I mean, 45 points is no joke. Um, The Cowboys and Bears literally just played last week, and the Bears did all right. You know, they put up like, what, 29 points? They gave up a lot of points too, but um, the defense for the Cowboys is really good in real life, so that was pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. And Fields puts up 400 yards and three touchdowns. I can't complain. And let's freaking go. Super Bowl in year five. You cannot write it any better than that. Who are we going to be having, though? That is the main question. Bills, Chiefs. Somebody, it's gonna be the Bills. 10 and 7 playbooks versus playbooks. <laughs> and Josh Allen gets his third MVP of the video, I believe. Herbert on the Falcons is number two. Mahomes, Dak, this freaking Cobb guy again. Fields is number nine, though. 
Ooh, Tevin Jenkins actually wins best old line. He's actually being a monster, bro. Reggie Hunter gets in here as well. Go ahead and check out our last Devies of the video. Field still <laughs> doesn't go up to Superstar somehow. Don't really understand. I could change uh, Tevin to a Superstar X Factor, but I'll hold off. I'll hold off. Defense. Wow. I mean, just so much stuff going on. Deron Payne is a Superstar. Jalen Johnson up to Superstar X Factor. And other than that, um... All I got to say is, Barnett, I still hate you. Check out this Bill squad, though. How are, they, how are they looking five years deep now? Diggs, of course, 99. Josh Allen, 99. Gregory Rousseau, 99. And X-Factor. Trey White still doing his thing. Dawson Knox developed into a beast. Same with Tremaine Edmonds. Andrew Cousins, I saw this guy. He was a receiver in, like, year number two or three. Wow, they have made him a monster. 96 speed, 98 acceleration, 96 agility, 93 change of direction. Oh my goodness. That alongside Diggs and with Josh Allen as their QB is very scary. And Rondell Moore. Oh my god, they have a superstar D tackle. Kair Elam developed. James Cook, Michael Carter, Freddie Lamonton. I don't I don't even know. They had a good squad, alright. <laughs> but is it better than our squad? It's close. They're an 89 overall. Definitely the best team we've played so far. We're at 93, though. Let's get into the Super Bowl. Let's get this first quarter on the way. Can we get the first points of the day? We do. 3-0. Bill's side up right quick, though, getting it to 3-3 at the end of the first quarter. Second Q on its way. We get the first touchdown to go up by 7 here. Get ball back. Can we capitalize here and get a little bit of a cushion? We can't. We cannot. It goes into the second half. 10 all there. We got a good, stingy battle in the Super Bowl here as they get their first lead of the game, but we get it right back. 17. We get a field goal to go up 7. We, oh my god! Another touchdown to go up by, what is that, 14 points. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the lead into the fourth quarter, and it's a third and five for the Buffalo Bills on their own 47. Can our defense come away with a stop here, which would be massive and which would give us so much momentum we cannot because that guy's wide open through the middle. Second and seven now in shotgun formation. Josh Allen dropping back to pass once again here and finds an open man on the sideline first down. Josh Allen just 15 for 27, though, not having his best performance, that's for sure. Handing this one off to James Cook. There is room on the side. It's an amazing tackle, though, just short of the first down marker. We got a third and two. On our 16, Josh Allen in empty. Maybe four down territory, probably four down territory. Doesn't need to be four down territory. It's another big play. But they recover that. Oh, our defense is coming absolutely through right now. Punching the ball out of everybody's hands. However, we could not capitalize there and pick up the ball, unfortunately. Which means it's a first and goal for the Buffalo Bills in our nine. Josh Allen dropping back time in the pocket. Slings it out left here. And it's a Stephon Diggs touchdown. Just textbook stuff. Textbook stuff from them. And with just a seven-point lead here, with still seven minutes to go as well, still plenty of time. We definitely need any sort of points here, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. Either would be amazing. But we don't get any yards there on the first play, which you'd love to see. Gives us a second and ten now. We need to waste more clock here. We're handing it off to McCaffrey again, and it's the same result. It's not because McCaffrey is a beast and luckily managed to make it away off those tackles and get ourselves four yards did well there to get positive yardage, but now we got a third and six. Got to rely on Justin Fields, and he comes through once again. Kadarius Tony. The clock is ticking, though. Under five minutes to go now on this second and eight. Fields dropping back to pass. Pressure is there. McCaffrey can make a man miss. That is why we signed him. He had a potential loss of yardage there, and he managed to get about eight, nine. That is incredible stuff, CMC. And it now gives us a third and one. It now gives us an opportunity to feed our power back. Our 93 overall, David Montgomery. And it's an easy first down. Another two minutes off the clock. And our main goal now is just to one, waste clock, and two, to get in field goal range. We're going to do a play action here. Fields, what are you doing, my guy? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He got absolutely popped there. Luckily, he held onto the ball. But I'm not sure what he was doing. The pocket kind of collapsed immediately. I'm not really too sure what happened there. But now we have a second and 18. We're way out of field goal range now. Mooney. 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 Mooney, 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 Mooney. Is that Kyler Gordon? Is that Kyler Gordon? No freaking way, right? No freaking way is that Kyler Gordon. It's Kyler Gordon. It's Ky You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Not only are we playing him in the Super Bowl, but he gets a massive, massive fumble from Darnell Mooney that was and Josh Allen is gonna do jo holy crap why is there so much room and just like that just like that they are on our 28 and are looking very threatening Josh Allen Stephon Diggs once again second and nine with Dawson Knox at fullback they hand it off to James Cook again he gets a good block 
but it's only a gain of four yards, giving us a third and five, two minute warning on our 10. Oh my God. We have ourselves an absolute thriller here in year number five. Empty formation, Josh Allen, touchdown. Dawson Knox, oh my God. Come on, boys. Our defense just folded. Our defense just folded. I mean, Darnell Mooney with that fumble and of course, Kyler Gordon being the one forcing it as well is just crazy. And the Bills drive down in absolute no time. Wow. But here we go, though. I don't want to have it no other way. It is all in our hands. Under two minutes to go. All three timeouts left. Justin Fields slings it to the sideline. It's a huge completion. Oh, my God. It's Acosta, the superstar tight end that we drafted. And just your number one, I believe. Your number one or your number two. I'm not too sure. They're going to review it here. He is well out of bounds, though. That was such a great catch as well, but unfortunately his foot just got out of bounds, giving us a second and 10 now. Fields slings it to the right side once again, and we just can't hold on. It's good defense by the Bills, and now we're going to give them a chance potentially to come back if we do not convert here on this third and long. Justin Fields, when I need you most, my boy, you sling it out, and Tony just bricks it. I mean, I feel like that was right in his hands, was it not? Dude, this is crazy. This is crazy that Kyler Gordon is going to be the one that makes potentially the game winning play here in year five, dude. We just need our defense. We need our defense to step up. It's a screen pass. Can somebody get out there and get them a big loss of yardage? We do. It's a loss. It's a, literally none. I swear that was more. I, th I thought it was going to be like minus four or something. Second and 10 now for the Bills. Josh Allen swings it super quick. And Stephon Diggs just like that. Oh my God. They are almost in field goal range already. And the clock is ticking. I might have to jump in after this so we can use our timeouts and just stop the run because man this is getting scary now james cook through the middle yep we gotta hop in bro i mean surely they run here right there's really no reason not to i guess they could need more yardage but james cook actually gets up a first down as well oh no are we cooked are we cooked i don't know though the cpu is kind of dumb this is all madden but sometimes if we get a big hit we can no fumble though this is, and this is what i mean they i tried to use a timeout there but they ended up using a timeout because it's a tie game in their minds, so that's kind of dumb. James Cook through the middle, gets a first down again, dude. You've got to be, I just can't stop him. And for some reason, I keep thinking they're going to play action as well, which of course they're not going to do. But like I said, the bots are kind of stupid here. Get a good wrap up. Are they going to call timeout? I will call timeout. Second and 12. Now another handoff to Cook. But it looks like the CPU have learned their lesson and they're going to they're going to waste the clock to go down to just a few seconds here. Are they? Yep, they are. They're going to kick the field goal. And they beat us. In the dying moments of the game. I tried to hop in and do everything I could. But literally, we could not stop James Cook. And unfortunately, our team had the chances. But we just couldn't come through. Go three and out. Mooney with the biggest cost. Or the, the, the biggest... Misplay of the game, fumbling there, and what makes it worse is it was to freaking Kyler Gordon, the dude we literally did not resign last season. Unreal, unreal. We had our chances though, we did. Fields was 23 for 42 for 237 yards there, both QBs with three touchdowns and one interception. McCaffrey was good with 4.6 a carry, no touchdowns for him though. James Cook was annoying at the end. Josh Allen had 9.6 a carry. My, God. it was all in that one play. Claypool was actually huge though, 91 yards, 7 receptions, 1 touchdown as well, Diggs was doing Stephon Diggs type things, Tony 2 touchdowns, Acosta 5 receptions for 45 yards, and Mooney, I hate to say it, but kind of costed us that game, my guy. Defensively, it's Edmonds and Nance leading the way for tackles, made a ton of TFLs for both sides here with Nance, Wooden, and Yachty, Rousseau, and Yachty revenge game. Actually, no, he never played for the Bears. Rhodes, Nick Bosa, and then sack numbers, two and a half for Bosa, one and a half for Rousseau. This Freddie dude, Wooden as well. And the interceptions went for Fisher and Murphy bunting. But, of course, the biggest play of the game was, was that Tremaine Edmonds that got away? Okay, it was, it was Kyler Gordon that recovered it, though. Yeah, so he didn't force it, but... I, I still hate him. <laughs> Very disappointing to lose, but I would have won if I had one thing. Kelvin Bridgeway. One one mistake in the draft can cost you a Super Bowl. Just like that. 92 overall now. I need to stop looking at him or I'm going to cry. Let's go ahead and wrap up this team, though, as we are near the end of the video. Justin Fields developed into a 91 overall QB. Somehow did not ever go up to Superstar. Despite, I feel like he put up decent little stats every single year. 
Deep accuracy never went up for whatever reason, but medium, short, throw and run, under pressure, break sack, throw power, just beautiful. Like first season, we didn't have the most yards, but of course that team was not good at all. 24 and 8, it's still not too bad. And then next season, 4,200 yards, 38 touchdowns to just 12 picks. That could definitely warrant a superstar dev. And then once again, every year, 4,000 yards, 30 plus touchdowns. And then in this last season, led us to the Super Bowl as well as hit 40 for the first time. He was a beast. McCaffrey was a beast for us in this last season. And Demont was actually really good throughout the video as well. Had a few seasons going over five a carry and like 13 touchdowns, 1,400 yards. Mooney was really good throughout this video as well. It just sucks I had to end like that for him. Claypool was decent for us. Of course, it's kind of the video was about him, but could really never get him involved too much. He was decent in that Super Bowl, though. Tony was really good. Acosta was, I believe, my first draft pick of the whole video. Superstar X Factor. What a beast. Dalton Schultz's brother was also nice as a backup. This O-line developed very nicely with Conklin. We brought in Mylotta. Reggie Hunter we drafted very early on. McKee. Tevin Jenkins developed into a beast. Defensively, though, is where we went crazy with the team. We brought in Nick Bosa. Deron Payne drafted Messina. Gibson developed into an animal. 88 overall. Superstar now. Murphy Bunting we brought in. Here's this Randolph dude. Bryce Hall, Jalen Johnson, a 92 X Factor now. Terrence Barnett. How what it could have been. What it could have been, man. Jaquan Brisker was an awesome player for us, though. We had we made him star because I thought he deserved it in real life. And then he goes up to superstar in the first season, up to a 90 overall now. And then linebackers. I mean, my God, we revamped this squad very nicely with Patrick Queen, TJ Edwards in free agency. And then we drafted Trainer and Nant, who both developed into 90 plus overalls and superstar X Factors. How can I be mad about that? A fun rebuild, nonetheless, though, has some great draft picks. I feel like we rebuilt the team into a really good team. I mean, 93 overall, I can't complain about that. It was really fun. This Bears team, I'm super excited to see what they do in the future. Very happy to see Fields finally get some help with Chase Claypool now as well. And um, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them as well. But if you guys made it here, hope you guys did enjoy the video. Please make sure to leave it a like. Comment down below which team you guys would like me to do next. And of course, let me know your guys' thoughts on this um, on the Bears trades at the deadline with Roquan Smith and Claypool as well. I would love to know your guys' thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed, though. Take care, everybody. Peace.